If you find yourself involved in the criminal justice system, if you're charged with a crime, you're probably wondering what's going on, what does all this mean, what are the consequences of my decisions, where do I go from here? So today we're talking with criminal defense attorney Sarah Stone from Lida Law Firm and answering your questions. Okay, so can you walk us through the criminal law process for a criminal defendant? What does that look like? Yeah, um, so to start, somebody is accused of a crime. So um, something happens and the police get involved and they have decided that a crime was committed. Um, again, sometimes that's not true. Sometimes the police are absolutely wrong about what happened. But they've decided that they have enough evidence to either arrest someone or to charge them by writing a summons to come to court later. So sometimes when you're charged, you will be arrested. For example, domestic violence charges in Colorado are mandatory arrest charges. So if they believe that they have probable cause to charge you with domestic violence, you will be arrested. Um, sometimes it's it's more like, you know, it looks like a ticket. It's a it's a summons to come to court later on a misdemeanor charge. So yeah, that's the first process. So then if you are arrested, you would have bond set in your case. So hopefully you can make bond um, to get out of jail. And um, that can be cash bond or it can be um, surety bond like your house. Yeah, at that point, you would be if you're in custody and you have a bond hearing, you would also be advised at that point. If you're not in custody, then you would have some kind of first appearance where you'd have an advisement where the judge is going to advise you of your rights and the charges against you. And sometimes at that point, you would plead guilty or not guilty to those charges. Um, sometimes you would set it over for a more formal arraignment on the charges where you would plead guilty or not guilty. This kind of depends on misdemeanors and felonies as well. Um, in felony, there's a little bit more of some stops in the system. Sometimes you'll have a preliminary hearing where the court will decide that the prosecution has enough evidence to move forward with charges. Um, in misdemeanors, unfortunately, there's no such kind of stop by the court. If the mm. prosecution believes they can make their case, then they'll move forward with the charges. So that's kind of the preliminary matters. And then usually what happens is that we kind of enter into the what I'd call plea bargaining phase of a case. 95 to 98% of criminal cases in this country plead out. So that means that you plead guilty to usually a lesser charge or potentially a sentencing agreement with the district attorney's office, with the prosecutor. Um, and that's what usually happens. And the reason for that, and it's one thing that I really dislike about our system, is that it is very, very risky for a lot of people to want to go to trial, mm -hmm. even if they believe that they are 100% not guilty. Mm -hmm. So that's what happens. So the prosecution and I will go back and forth um, discussing a plea bargain. Um, I'm going to look at the evidence and see how strong their case is and kind of point out to them in their case, what could be a weakness. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to offer mitigation at that point. Again, things that exist in my client's favor, stuff like maybe this is your first criminal charge ever. That's a big deal, right? Right. Uh, the system is typically going to treat you a lot more fairly um, if it's your first time through. Okay. Or maybe there's other extenuating circumstances. Uh, maybe I can get somebody to swear an affidavit that whatever the prosecutor is saying happened did not happen. So that you kind of present them with, hey, this is not as strong as you think it's going to be. And at that point, my client and I will discuss whether it is beneficial or not to move forward with a plea bargain or to, again, force the prosecution to go to trial. And can a plea bargain sometimes include something like a deferred prosecution where you don't necessarily have um, a criminal record as a result of the plea? Yes. So a deferred prosecution or a deferred judgment are always options. Um, pure dismissal of the charges as well is an option. Again, 
the prosecution prosecution doesn't have really any reason to dismiss the charge unless they believe they cannot prove it that it's a really weak case um it's you know it's one of those things that's very difficult i think for um people accused of crimes to understand is that when they're when they're like i didn't do this and i can't prove a negative Mm -hmm. that's hard it's like the burden is on the prosecution to prove but yes a lot of times a really good outcome is deferred judgment or deferred prosecution so when you're involved in negotiations around a plea agreement all of those things are on the table and it depends on a lot of factors is that right yeah a lot of factors and again that that's one reason that it's important to have an attorney on your side is that i get to help you sort of figure out what the the cost benefit of that is to you to say, Hey, we can take this to trial. We can, we can go further. We can do motions. Sometimes we do evidentiary motions, um, before trial, we can do all that. It's going to take more time. It's going to cost more money. And sometimes it's easier just to say, okay, I'm, I'm going to take a deferred judgment plea. I'm going to do six months of probation. <laughs> and at the end of that time, uh, the charge will be dismissed against me if I have successfully completed probation. So um, that's kind of an individual decision for everybody. And it can be a difficult one. Um, but trial, you know, a lot of people just don't trust that a trial is going to mm. go their way. Um, so that's, it's a, it's a hard, it's a hard call, but that's my job is to look kind of at the scope of my experience and what has happened with similar cases and similar circumstances and go, look, this is a good deal for you under these circumstances, or you know what, this is not, this is a bum deal. Got it. So if you are charged with a crime, you may not know or be aware of all the options available to you um, unless you have a lawyer. Yeah. There's, you know, I think a lot of people will go, especially in misdemeanor defense, they'll go to that first court appearance. And the first thing they do is, you know, they'll meet with a, with a prosecutor who is usually a fairly nice person <laughs> and is going to say, Hey, you know, I'll do this for you. I'll do this for you. Um, and you're like, I don't, that sounds like a pretty good deal. Right. But it may not. There are a lot of unforeseen consequences that you may not be aware of. Sometimes people just want to be done with the thing. <laughs> they just want right. to have it over and they're like, okay, cool. This means I don't go to jail. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take this, you know, this plea, but that conviction will be on your record for a long time <laughs> mm -hmm. and it can affect, it can affect a lot of things, your gun rights, your employment, all those things. And unless you kind of thought through those consequences with an attorney, you may not be getting as good a deal as you think you are. Okay, I hope this video was helpful to you. Please remember to click like, subscribe, and click the bell for notifications about more content like this. And thank you for watching.